Hello, welcome to PC Mag Live. I'm Dan Costa. He is Alex Colon, and we've got a great show for you today. We're going to talk about the top tech news of the day. We're going to answer some of your reader questions and then show you one very cool thing from the lab. But first, we want to tell you that today's show is brought to you by TechBargains.com. And Tech Bargains has a special deal for PC Mag Live viewers. If you go to the URL on your screen right now, you type in this coupon code, you can get $100 off select refurbished Sony HDTVs. I checked it out. They've got a they've got a 40-inch Sony HDTV for 300 bucks. Pretty good deals on TechBargains.com. Not bad. But let's move on to the big news. We've got big, big news today. We've been waiting months to release this news. Tell us what it is, Alex. Well, so today's big news comes straight out of PC Mag, And like Dan said, we've been working on it for months. And we finally have the results of our fastest mobile networks testing for this year. And the, the winner is? The winner is, I want more buildup. I want more buildup. Oh. We drove 3,000 miles. <laughs> we tested in 30 cities. We, did more than, we collected more than 80,000 data points of tests across all of the major wireless carriers. And the number one nationwide wireless carrier in the United States at this moment is Verizon Wireless. Um, and that is largely on the strength of Verizon's new XLTE network, which uh, where it was available, we were just seeing truly incredible speeds. Um, AT&T was the winner last year. Um, this year they came in, not, not, it was a really close race. It was, it was very close and T-Mobile did very well too. Surprisingly, in, yeah. In the cities where T-Mobile had service, um, they performed really well in urban areas. But in rural areas, in the suburbs, they fell down a little bit and, and Verizon's numbers were stronger and that's why they, they won out the nationwide award. But T-Mobile is interesting because they went from having like zero LTE coverage last year to it being almost everywhere this year. Yeah, That really, was really, really impressive. And depending on how you use your cellular system, I've always said that who the most important, the fastest nationwide carrier is less important than who the fastest carrier is, where you live, where you work, where you go on business. If, if, you, if you stay in the city, and you, and you don't travel a lot, and you've got great T-Mobile coverage, the prices are great, then T-Mobile might be the carrier for you. Yeah, definitely, and we have a massive story online, so you should look through that and look for where you live and where you plan to travel, and you can decide from there if you're planning to switch to a new carrier. Yeah, pcmag.com slash fastest mobile networks, all the information's there, really great work by Sasha Segan, our lead mobile analyst, and um, just a killer story. Um, and let's move to our next story, which is um, this morning, if you haven't been able to load Evernote or Feedly, that's because they've both been taken down by a DDoS attack. So yeah. what's going on with that, Dan? Yeah, 100 million uh, Evernote users. It's a great popular service. I use it and um, being targeted by, uh, by hackers and um, basically just shutting it down. DD DDoS attacks have been, have been on the rise in recent years. 2013 saw an 800% increase in DDoS attacks larger than 20 gigabits per second. And it's just, they're basically just slamming these sites with traffic and keeping them from operating. And uh, sites have some defenses they can put up, but it's still a relatively effective attack tactic. And this is sort of like a genuine pirate style attack because Feedly says that the attackers are demanding ransom. Um, I mean, I, I feel like we don't typically hear that. No, not for a big service like that. I've heard about individual, individual, individuals being targeted and having their accounts locked up with ra ransomware. But um, yeah, this is the thing. It's, it, you have to pay to play. And you've got to look at a company like Feedly or Evernote. What are they willing to pay to keep their users happy? Um, and then if they do pay, aren't they just going to be a target for future attacks? Well, Feedly says that they're not going to comply with the request. Um, and it looks like right now Evernote is sort of back up and running. It might be a little patchy for some users. Uh, Feedly, I think, is still down at the moment, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, scary news. F track all the changes on PCMag.com. And um, another, uh, our next news story is another big acquisition for Google. They just spent $500 million to acquire a satellite startup, Skybox Imaging. Um, that could have some pretty big, uh, pretty big ramifications for Google Maps. Yeah, I mean, everybody's thinking that, it, that this could be Google's attempt to deliver internet, internet service across the globe. That's not really what Skybox does. They're really a mapping company. They've got some great imaging, imaging software, and it's really going to be a Google Maps upgrade. And eventually, they want to have enough satellites up so they can actually create real-time maps of the planet and, and, and deliver that on Google Maps. So instead of Google having to go to the satellite companies and pay, and, and, uh, pay them for access to their data and their, and their maps, Google's going to be able to build their own and, and really fine tune it. It's really, it, it astonishes me the ambition of Google. There's really nothing, no information industry that they don't want to dominate. And can you imagine a map where, I mean, Skybox can d get down like as close as a, less than a meter. Yeah. I mean, that you can see that in real time, that would be incredible. They were talking about, you know, mapping oral reserves in real time, um, doing uh, reports on forests and telling you exactly how many trees were in the forest. So just incredible opportunities for them. I don't even think they know all the different applications that this will open up, but they want to invest in the platform. They see potential and 
they've got deep pockets, so $500 billion, totally worth it for them. Yeah, I'm curious to see where it goes. Yeah. Uh, so now let's move on to one of your questions. And uh, we have a question from Michelle who wrote via email. Um, I just got a new Android phone and it's loaded with a bunch of apps I don't need or want. How can I get rid of them? So you have two different ways that you could do this. Um, if if uh, you have a lot of experience with Android phones, um, you can root the phone and install a custom version of Android, but I'm assuming most people don't want to do that. It's a long, complicated process. So an easier way to do this is on your phone, you could go into the settings menu, and in settings, you could switch over there. There'll be a little column for apps. Under apps, you could find the apps that you don't want. Um, when you tap on them, you'll be given, if, if you're lucky, there'll be an option to uninstall them. If you're not, you'll just see an option to disable them. Disabling them, will, they'll still be on your phone. You won't be able to remove them, but they won't show up anywhere. So that's a nice way to get them out of your site, if not necessarily it's from clogging up your phone. The problem, with, um, you know, the problem with bloatware in general is that carriers and manufacturers installed on phones, and sometimes there's just nothing you can do about it. Yeah, it's incredibly frustrating. I've got a Samsung Galaxy S3 still, and it's loaded with applications. The other way you can go, you can go and get a Google Play edition of uh, many Android phones, and that will be just stripped down pure Android, and that's what a lot of Android purists uh, really want anyway. Yeah, so hopefully, though, that'll help you out for now. Um, and now let's move on to our one cool thing. Indeed, we should. The Ion Air Pro 3. So the Ion, we don't, we don't have the helmet here, but this we, is a- We're not wearing the helmet. A helmet I'm mountable action camera. Uh, it's $309. It has really great video quality, um, and the, the it's, it's better than its predecessors because it can now shoot 1080p video at 60 frames per second. It's waterproof. It has a cool flashlight design where you could just sort of point it and shoot at whatever you want. You could use micro SD cards up to 64 gigs. Um, we give it three and a half stars because it's still, it's relatively pricey. The companion app isn't that great and it doesn't have a removable battery, but it still gets the job done, especially if you're looking for um, a, a, cam a camera to take on your next trip. And this goes up against the GoPro, which I, we love, but it's a little boxy. It's like, it seems strange. It doesn't feel like a camera to me. It feels like a box that is also taking video. Right. This feels more like a camcorder and somehow seems more flexible as a, as a, as a camera to them. Right. I think it depends on sort of where you're going and what you plan on doing to, you know, which form factor you want to choose. Very cool though, and you can read the full review on PCMag.com now. Yeah, so thanks for watching and we'll be back again tomorrow.